Hello, my name is Paul Monachino and I'm the Director of Music and Organist at Rosary Cathedral in Toledo. I'm happy to be a part of this virtual organ crawl presented by the Toledo chapter of the American Guild of Organists. I'm here at the Triforium level of the cathedral and thought I would start with a unique view of the cathedral that uh, many people don't get to see. So here we are way up above. And you see there the choir loft and those large um, wooden paneled um, openings, similar to where the organ sits on the other side of the sanctuary. So we come back into the Triforium and we see down the hall here is the organ chamber. The organ was installed in 1931 by the E.M. Skinner Organ Company, Opus 820. That is when the cathedral building itself was completed and it was uh, dedicated in 1940. The cathedral building itself was dedicated in 1940, but the organ has been in the building since 1931. It's four manuals and 76 ranks. As we walk into the chamber here, we first see the pedal division. Here is the trombone, the 16 foot, eight foot trombone pedal rank. And then here is the, uh, the stopped flute rank, the octave. And then uh, against each wall of the chamber are the lower 12 pipes of the 32 foot. So here's the lowest pipe and they sit along the wall here. And the rest are on the other side. The chamber is about 15 foot deep and about 25, maybe 30 feet wide. Um, so quite a bit of organ in a relatively small space. So behind the, uh, the pedal is the solo division. Here's the pedal mixture. And the solo division is right up above and to the back of the chamber. Uh, one chest up there. And then here we move around to the swell division. This is the lower chest of the swell division. And then you can see there's a door at the end of this walkboard and that uh, looks into the lower chest of the choir division. These two divisions are uh, stacked on two levels. So there's a lower chest and an upper chest. We can maybe get a view of that. Looking right up here, here's the ladder that would lead you uh, up to the upper chest of the, uh, of the swell. The grate sits out front, and here you see the lower chest of the grate, and then uh, you see at least the bottom boards of the upper chest, uh, which has all the reeds on it. So these three divisions are on two levels in the organ. The grate is out front, swell behind the grate. And then we walk over here and we see that the choir is at this end of the chamber, again on, on two levels. And making our way to the other end of the chamber. Um, here are the other uh, 32 foot pipes on this wall. So quite a bit of organ packed into this space. Um, here, that's the great battery Payson, 16 foot. And here's a view of the other, other side of the lower chest and, of course, the upper chest above. And then this is just a small view of inside of the, uh, the large wooden screens that are in front of the organ chamber. So here we are at the console. And to demonstrate some of the softer sounds on the Skinner organ here at Rosary Cathedral, I'm going to play the third movement of Didor's fourth symphony, Mark Dolce. 
So it will start on the swell with the strings and flutes eight foot, and then um, it calls for the pont de huit, which is uh, on this organ, I'm using the first diapason, the harmonic flute and the viola, uh, eight and four foot flutes in the choir, and uh, 16 and eight in the pedal, the flutes in the pedal, uh, calls for a clarinet, and I'm using the corno di bassetto in the solo division, which is just a large scale clarinet. At the end um, and the final uh, uh, hearing of the melody, uh, you'll hear the harmonic flute alone in the uh, grate. And then the final uh, flute that you'll hear is the flauto mirabilis in the solo division.
Hi folks, and welcome to St. John's Episcopal Church in Bowling Green, Ohio, for our little virtual organ tour. I am Neil Kraft, and I'm currently serving as the organist of this parish. I say little because the parish is small, and so is our pipe organ. We are here in a sanctuary that seats at the most, I would guess, probably 80 to 100 people if you really crammed them in. The organ was built in 2015 by the Beckerat Company in Germany and was given to the parish by Dr. Vernon Wolcott, who served for many years on the music faculty at Bowling Green State University, which is located right across the street from here. The organ is a small mechanical action or tracker instrument of six stops. It is the size of an instrument that you might find in a college or university practice room, but it also fills the needs of this space quite well. It has two manuals or keyboards of 54 notes each. There is a pedal board of 30 notes. There is no enclosed or swell division here, like many of us are used to. The volume is simply controlled by the number of stops pulled out by the organist. The divisions are labeled simply manual one, manual two, and pedal. There are unison couplers uniting the various divisions to one another. One of the things I find interesting on this organ is that the keys don't visibly move when the couplers are engaged, like you would see in many other tracker organs. I played the organ for a few, few weeks before I discovered that that wasn't happening, and I kind of like it. All the manual pipes are located here in the main case. The pedal sub-bass pipes are separated behind the main case, and we'll go there in, in a bit. The action for the pedal runs under the lowest level of the instrument. Otherwise, the organist is the first to hear the organ play as the sound hits you directly in the face when you're playing on the manuals. The stops include, let me slide it. On, the, uh, on manual one, which is the main manual, of course, we have an eight-foot oar flute. I'm sorry, I got the couplers on. <laughs> oar flute, four-foot octave, and a very boisterous two to three rank mixture, which is right here in the organist's face. And when it's on, Manual two is an eight foot gadet. And a four foot war flute. And the underpinnings to it all is the 16 foot sub bass in the pedal. I don't know whether you'll be able to hear that on our recording or not. Uh, then the couplers are foot foot actuated, manual two to manual one, manual one to pedal, and manual two to pedal. So full out, the organ has a pretty big sound. Without the mixture, it's a little easier to take. And if we want to come around this way, or that way, we can see the 16-foot sub-base is here behind the main case. There are even, I don't know um, if our cameraman can get this or not, there are pipes built into the side of the, or of the main organ case, wooden pipes, which are the bases to the uh, 
manual eight foots. Access to the organ is through the panels behind the main case. Service and tuning can be accomplished there. And this also opens down here. I won't take time to open that now because I might not get it closed. So all in all, that is our little organ here. I will play a little something for you and give you an idea of what happens here. I have a little piece by um, by Douglas Wagner, it's an arrangement of the hymn tune Marion, Rejoice ye pure in heart, or in some hymnals, Rejoice the Lord is King, I believe, maybe. It goes like this.
Uh, that's it from St. John's Episcopal in Bowling Green. You'll notice that good things do come in small packages. If you want to stop by and see the organ and get up close and personal with it, give me a call and we'll make arrangements for you to look it over. Otherwise, our Sunday morning service is at 10 a.m. Thanks a lot.